What's up Stitches? My name is Michael or welcome to or back to my YouTube channel. In this video, it's the one that you've all been requesting. It is the tutorial on how to knit an Among Us crewmate. But the smaller one, not this guy over here. In this video, I'm going to show you how I constructed this piece all together. Also in the description, there is a free written out pattern that is available on my website. Head on over there if you want to see it all written down. If not, then feel free to follow along with this video and let me know if there's anything that you guys found confusing. There are a few tweaks that I made to the visor. So my advice is to follow the written pattern rather than what I did in this video. I worked out where I went wrong and really didn't want to go back and correct it. So follow the written pattern for the visor. Just the visor, the, the eye cord is all the same. Everything else is the same, but the visor. If you like this video and you find it useful, then hit the like button. That lets me know that you guys are making your own little Among Us crewmates and subscribe to see more content like this. I am gonna start designing how to knit one of the dead ones with the head chopped off and the bone sticking out. That's uh, that's coming along, so that'll be out eventually. I'm not gonna make any promises on that one. And I wanna see your knitted crewmates, so if you have Instagram, then tag me in your pictures of your completed crewmates uh, at Smichael Goes Knitting. This video is a long one because it's a full tutorial, so I'm gonna keep this short. Let's get into the video. For the materials you need yarn, you should use chunky yarn. I'm using Aran Held Double. Also some DK held double for the visor and some DK held single black for the black trim. You'll also need 6.5 millimeter circular needles for the main body and four millimeter needles for the trim. You'll also need stitch markers, scrap yarn and a tapestry needle. The techniques you'll need for this is knit and purl, magic loop, make one right, eye cord, knit two together and slip slip knit, long tail cast on, knit front and back and bind off. You will also be doing the mattress stitch, the running stitch, the gathering stitch and the invisible seam but I'll show you how to do all of those. To start the legs you will need to use the long tail cast on and you'll need to cast on four stitches. Then you want to slide all four stitches onto the cable and then split them in the middle so two stitches either side and pull them up towards the needles. Then you want to place your stitch marker on the needle that has the last stitch you casted on and you want to pull that needle so the stitches are on the cable for that needle and the other needle has the live stitches. Then you just want to knit the two stitches off the other needle. Then you want to swap the needle position so you pull the stitches you've just worked off the needle and the stitches that are to be worked onto the needle like so. It can be a bit difficult but just stick with it, it will go eventually. And then you just want to knit those two stitches and that is the end of round one. For round two we're going to spice things up a bit and into every stitch you're going to make one stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit into stitch normally but not pull the stitch off the needle and then knit into the back of the stitch as well. It's sometimes known as knit front and back and so that just means in each stitch you're increasing by one so you will have four on each needle. Because I wanted a nice round number of 10, what you're going to do for round three is knit one, then you're going to make a right leaning increase. So you pick up the bar between the stitches and then knit into the front of that. And then you want to knit the other three stitches on the first needle. If you don't like the make one right method, you can just knit into the front and back of that second stitch to increase one. So you'll have five. And then you want to do the same on the next needle. So it's knit one and then make one right or knit one and knit in the front and back. And so you should have 10 stitches all together or five stitches on each needle. So you've just finished round three. So from rounds four to 12, you are just going to knit every stitch. So that's knit the five stitches on the first needle, knit the five stitches on the second needle, and then you'll be at the beginning of round. You just wanna do that until you get to round 12 and you'll be left with something that looks like this. From here, you will need to thread your scrap yarn onto your tapestry needle because we're gonna be putting all the stitches you just worked onto this scrap yarn so that we can begin working the second leg. 
So what I would do is start at the last stitch that you just knit and just slip it all off the needle and onto the tapestry needle and onto the scrap yarn. And then once you've finished the first side, pull down on your circular needles and then do the same thing. Slip them all on to the tapestry needle and onto the scrap yarn. If you have a stitch holder, you can use that, but I just prefer to use scrap yarn because this is just so small. Now leaving a bit of tail, you want to snip the working yarn so that you can get started working on the second leg. To do the second leg, you work everything exactly the same up to round 12, but don't slip it onto scrap the yarn. This is because we are now going to start working on the body. So to work the body, you will have just finished round 12. Slip the stitch marker, and then using the backward loop method, you want to cast on two stitches onto the needle and that will be the gap between the legs of the crewmate. Now you want to grab your first leg that you did and using the needle that you did not just cast two stitches on you want to pick up the stitches from the last ones you knit on that end. You'll see what I mean on the screen you just want to use the other needle to put the stitches on so that you can then they will then be on the left hand needle for you to knit them. I as you could see, I was struggling here. So what I would advise you do is you slip on five, then slip it down onto the cable, and then you pick up the rest of the stitches, just so you don't have to faff around like I clearly am doing right now. Now that the other leg is on the needle, you just want to continue knitting from where you was. So you cast it on the two stitches, and now you just want to continue knitting round the other leg until you get to the gap between the two legs on the other side. When knitting that last stitch, just be sure to pull the tail a little bit so it's not loose and so you don't get big holes in your work because it will be looser than all the other stitches because it's just a free hanging tail, so I tuck that away. So to close that big gap, you want to look on the cast on edge from your previous stitches and you'll see there's four big gaps. I know we only cast them on two, I don't know why there's four big gaps. But what I do is I pick up four stitches between those stitches. So I use the pick up and knit method and I just pick up those four stitches. I know that I'll leave an uneven stitch count. So on the next round, what I do is either side of those two, I just knit two stitches together. And now that you've picked up those four stitches, you just want to knit round to the beginning of round marker. I would really suggest that you guys have the free pattern open, again linked in the description, having that open so you can follow along and see things because sometimes it's nice to be able to read what's going on as well as see. Now you slip the beginning of my round marker and you just want to knit all of the stitches including the ones you just cast on on this side of the needle and then when you get to the other side you want to knit the first four stitches then you want to slip slip knit so that you're, knit, you're reducing the stitch counts by two. Then you want to knit two stitches, and then after that you want to knit two stitches together, again reducing the stitch count to make sure that you are even on both sides. And now you just want to knit to the beginning of the round marker, so that was round two of the body. From rounds three to rounds 23, you want to just knit all the stitches and just to make sure you have the stitch count right you should have 24 stitches overall and so that means 12 on each needle. Now you have finished the bulk of the body it's time to stuff the crewmate. So using any polyester stuffing you just want to pull off small chunks from the stuffing bag and you just want to stuff it slowly and like little by little, starting at the legs, making sure they're fully stuffed before moving on to the rest of the crewmate. Now you've finished stuffing your crewmate, you just want to move on to round 24. And this is just knitting two stitches together across all the stitches. So you're reducing the 24 stitches on the needle down to 12 stitches. And you just literally want to go around and knit two together on every stitch. 
After round 24, you just want to add the final bits of stuffing into the top of the crew meat, just so it doesn't kind of sag anywhere and it's nice and fully stuffed. And round 25 is the same as round 20, knitting two together on every two stitches around the top of the head. So you're reducing 12 stitches down to six stitches. Now you've finished round 25, you want to remove the stitch marker that's no longer needed. You want to cut a long tail and thread the tapestry needle onto the tail of that yarn. And you just want to do a gathering stitch and basically like you're slipping all the stitches onto the scrap yarn, but this time you're slipping it onto the tail so that you can pull it all together, pull it tight. And so it just closes up that little gap at the top. And as you can see, once you've pulled it taut, it's nice and sealed. And now you just want to weave the tail end into the top. And as you can see, it's not perfect. There's a bit of a gap in the stitches where the stitch marker was, and there's a hole in the legs. And so I was wondering if anyone has any ideas on why that happened. I'm not 100% sure why. So what I'm doing now is I'm just threading some scrap yarn of the same color around the hole and then kind of sticking in any stuffing and just tying it together and then weaving that in because I don't know how to stop that from happening. It's happened every single time I've made the crewmate and I don't know how to change it. So any help would be appreciated. Moving on to the backpack slash jetpack slash life support thing. Again, I'm going to be making this shape so then I can sew up the corners. So of course, using the long tail cast on, you're going to be casting on five stitches. And for rows one to three, you're just going to be doing the stockinette stitch. So the first row you're going to be knitting, then the next row you're purling, next row knitting. This is knit flat, it's not in the round, so that makes things slightly easier here. Once you get to the end of row three, you want to, using the backwards loop cast on, cast on three more stitches at the side. Row four, you're going to knit those three stitches you just cast on along with the other five stitches. And once you get to the end of that row, again, you're gonna cast on three stitches using the backwards loop method so that you can start making the shape of the little square thing. Now from rows five to rows 12, you just want to work in stockinette stitch. So all the right side rows or the odd numbered rows, you want to knit all the stitches. And for all the wrong side rows or the row with all the pearl bumps, you want to purl all of the stitches. So it looks like this. Then when you get to row 13, you want to start off by binding off three stitches. So you're just binding off the three stitches that you added at the start using the standard bind off, then knitting to the end. And then row 14, binding off purl wise, using the standard bind off, you want to bind off three of those stitches and then purl to the end. Then for rows 15 and 16, you just want to knit and then purl respectively. And then row 17, you want to be binding off the remaining five stitches using the standard bind off again. And that's the basic shape of this done. Once you do that, you want to leave a quite a long tail so that you can finish off the bind off and then you can use that to stitch it to the back of the crewmate. So at this point, you want to make the shape because it's just a flat shape. So looking at this diagram, you want to sew those corners together. On the actual pattern, there's a nice resource for different options for sewing it. I used a kind of mattress stitch, horizontal stitch type thing. I'm not really sure the name of it. It's on the link in the pattern, so do check that out. And you want to do this for all four of the corners so it makes a little shape like this. Now to hide the little imperfection where the stitch marker created a bit of a weird stitch consistency, I'm just gonna cover it up with a backpack and no one will ever know. Now I'm just tying on some extra yarn to the tail of this so that I can start stitching this to the backpack. Again, the resource that I've linked in the pattern is perfect 
perfect for doing the invisible seam method. I'm going to show you here how I do it on each of them. So I pick up the two legs of the V on the body of the crewmate and I pull the stitch through and then I do the same thing on the backpack. So I go under the two legs of the V on the backpack and I just kind of line it all up and then I just keep doing that. So then I would go onto the V that was next to the original stitch that I picked up. Uh, the little Vs I'm referring to are the stitches. So you pick up the little V and then you pull the yarn through on the body and then you go and do the same thing to the backpack and you just do that along for the bottom. Now to do the sides I'm going to be doing the mattress stitch so to do that you need to go between the stitches so between the V and pick up the bar that is between that and go under that. So you want to do that on the body and then you want to do it on the backpack finding the V and then locating the little bar between going underneath that pulling it through and pulling that taut. So again, the free resource will tell you everything. So you want to do that across the bottom, up the left side, across the top, and then halfway down the right side, leaving a gap so that you can stuff it. So once you are happy with that, you just get the stuffing. Again, you should do it in smaller bits, but I wasn't so precious about this one because it didn't really have too much of a shape other than square, and that's easier to stuff than the crewmate's legs. So just stuff this and then once you're done, just continue the mattress stitch, weave in the tail and then snip that yarn. And now your crewmate is really starting to take shape. It's really starting to look like one of these little characters from Among Us. So all that's left to do is the visor. As I mentioned at the start of the video, don't follow this video tutorial 100% of the way. One thing I did differently is instead of casting on three stitches, I cast it on five. Please follow the pattern on my website to knit the visor because this turned out weirdly and so I had to improvise because at the time I didn't realize what I had done wrong. So to knit the visor, you want to take your blue yarn and you want to be holding two strands of it. So you want to hold it double. Equally, you could use Aran weight yarn. That's fine. And then you would only need to hold that single. And the techniques that I'm showing you here are the same. So this is making one right. So you want to pick up the bar between the two stitches and knit through the front. And then you're going to be making one left on the other side of this middle stitch. The reason I'm keeping this in the video is so that you guys can see all the different techniques needed to make the actual crewmate. But I'm just going to talk you through what you're actually supposed to be doing. So you're supposed to be casting on five. Row one is purling. All the stitches. Row two is knit one, make one right, knit three, make one left, then knit one. Row three you want to purl all the stitches, row four you want to knit one, make one right, knit five, make one left, knit one. Row five is purl, row six is knit, row seven is purl, row eight is knit one, slip slip knit, knit till there's three stitches left on the left hand needle, knit two together, knit one. Row nine, purl. Row 10, knit one, slip slip knit, knit till there's three stitches left on the needle, knit two together, then knit one. Then row 11 is purl and row 12 is bind off all of the five stitches left, leaving an eight inch or 20 centimeter tail. The reason I'm leaving all this in is so you can see kind of every bit of what I'm doing visually. Feel free to leave in the comments if anything is confusing. This is how mine turned out. Yours will be better, it will be wider, and so you'll be able to put it on to the crewmate with the stitches all going the same way, rather than the way that I'm having to do it because it's not wide enough and putting the stitches facing horizontally. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to do a simple running stitch to get the visor onto the crewmate. So place the visor on the crewmate how you want it. You can put pins in if you want to. I didn't really want to because I'm very clumsy and I'm probably going to stab myself. And then you just want to stick the needle in underneath the like gaps in the stitches and make sure you're picking up some stitches from the body and you want to do that all the way around up until you're nearly finished leave a bit of a gap and then stuff it again i wasn't very precious with the stuffing here i just did whatever 
and it looks like this uh, once you've closed up the hole then that's how mine looks again your all the stitches will be vertical in your one so just follow the online pattern now if you're happy with how your crewmate looks now then don't worry about this step but if you want to continue here's the eye quad trim so i'm doing the knitted cast on for this you can use the long tail cast on i just prefer the knitted cast on it's very simple you put the slip knot on the needle then you knit into it and instead of knitting that off the stitch you twist it and put the stitch you just picked up onto the needle as you can see from here it's really simple it's one of the simple cast on methods so we are going to be working the eye cord stitch i've shown you how to knit the eye cord stitch in previous videos such as my ariana grande video where i knit the straps for the dress however I'll just talk you through how to do it. So for the first row, what I do is I just knit the first row normally. That makes it easier for me when joining them later. Then once you've knit a row, you want to slip those three stitches back onto the left hand needle. Then you want to knit the stitches again. The working yarn will be coming from the leftmost stitch and that's fine. That's how it's supposed to be. So it curves round. It can make it a bit tricky and a bit fiddly. So do beware. Make sure you're using your four millimeter needles and your black DK yarn to do this section. You want to continue this until the eye cord trim fits snugly around the visor and you want to join the ends by using a kind of vertical seaming technique. This is very difficult to show you on camera because it is black so I couldn't really get good footage of it but there is more information on the blog post so do check that out for more information. To attach the eye cord to the crewmate what I did was I just did a simple running stitch so I just placed the trim where I wanted it to go and then just did what I did for the visor because I, th I thought that was simple enough. And here he is. Nice little little crewmate. You should have one of your own if you follow the tutorial all the way through. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments. I'm happy to answer anything. This is my first written pattern of a stuffed toy thing. So there's bound to be a few mistakes. So I'm happy to hear what you guys have to say. If you have any ideas of what you want me to knit next, then do put them down in the comments below. I've got a few things in my little list of things to do. So I will be bringing out more content that you guys have been requesting soon. And now you guys are probably wondering, Smichael, where, where were these polls on Instagram to name big old crewmate over here? Um, I have a confession. I heard a name, someone gave me a suggestion. And upon hearing that, I could not name this crewmate anything else. So, the name for this crewmate is Sir Spicious. Big thanks to my friend Unicorn Ninja who suggested Sir Spicious. Um, I love it. I love it so much. I, I couldn't put it to a vote because I couldn't at any point have the possibility that this guy wasn't going to be called Sir Spicious. Uh, so... That's him, that's so suspicious. Uh, this little guy doesn't have a name, if you guys wanted to name him. Um, I won't be biased this time, promise. Yeah, I think I'm gonna knit a load of these, a load of different colours. And maybe if I'm committed enough to the cause, I'll do a stop motion animation <laughs> using my knitted crewmates. I already have, well, he was knitted a bit differently, um, as you can tell. The visor. The visor is my problem area, guys, and uh, the backpack. I extended it on this one. Um, I'm gonna make a load of these because I love them. I love them so much. I've not loved a game as much as I love Among Us. I think it's because it's the personal aspect of having to play with your friends or with people you don't know, but I like playing with my friends. But yeah, I'm just rambling now. I'm gonna stop rambling and let you guys enjoy your lives. Tag me in Instagram or sharing me your little crewmates. I want to see them all. And yeah, I will see you next week on my podcast going through everything I've knit since my last podcast, which is a lot. So uh, 
Make sure you set some time aside to watch that one. <laughs> I hope you guys have fun making your little crewmates and I will see you soon. Stay wholesome and happy knitting.